Today on Medical Alert, we're talking about a condition that affects an estimated 2.7 million people in the United States. Atrial fibrillation, or it's also called AFib, is a quivering or irregular heartbeat that can lead to blood clots, stroke, heart failure, and other heart-related complications. And here to talk about the danger of AFib is Dr. James Hamilton. He's a cardiologist with Baptist Health Systems. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. Friend. Let's talk about some of the symptoms. We talked about some of the things that can happen as right. a result of AFib, but what are some of the symptoms we need to look out for? So it can be highly variable between patients. So some people have almost no symptoms and some people can't get a beat without feeling an irregular palpation in, in the chest. It can be rapid heart rates, it can be slow. Some people can pass out. Uh, you can have shortness of breath. You can develop heart failure symptoms related to excessive volume overload and things like that. Uh, highly variable, but generally a sensation that something's off or irregular can be as subtle as just increased fatigue. What about getting giving out of breath when climbing stairs and things of that nature? It's one of the many differential diagnoses we call it. It's one of the many things that can cause that symptom. But it may be for some people the first sign that they're in AFib. Now as a cardiologist, what do you do to check to make sure that a patient is not suffering with AFib? The easiest thing for most people if they're experiencing the symptoms at that time is to perform a routine 12 lead electrocardiogram, something that's done in any clinic or ER anywhere in the country pretty much. What gets a little harder to discern is if someone has intermittent symptoms that only happen occasionally. Then we talk about monitors that you can wear at home or potentially monitors that get implanted under the skin and have a battery life of about three years and monitors you for every beat of every day. Now, as far as surgery, is that a, a way to cure this problem or is there a cure? Do you have to change your diet? What is the best way to attack AFib? It should be based on an individual person's symptoms. Right now, the treatment for atrial fibrillation encompasses sort of parallel paths. The first is to make sure you're not at risk of having a stroke. It's by far the most important thing we can do for a patient on an individual basis is assess your stroke risk and try with medications at first to prevent you from having a stroke if that wasn't your initial presentation in the first place. For others, the symptoms of the palpitations or other things we discussed lead you to seek out treatment. And for those, we have to discern what would be the best strategy. Is it simply controlling the heart rate and trying to make it more normal? Or is it something that we need to control the rhythm with medications or even a procedure? And we can nowadays thankfully offer advanced procedures that are catheter based as well as sometimes surgical surgically based to try and maybe not cure, but for a substantial number of people affect the AFib such that um, it is gone. So, now, is this something that's hereditary or is this something that you develop over time uh, with age or what exactly causes right. it? The biggest risk factor is probably age and second to that is high blood pressure. There are some rare genetic variants but it's more common that high blood pressure and obesity and lifestyle choices run in families and that leads to atrial fibrillation. So the best thing to do is get checked out by your cardiologist. That's right. All right. Thank you so much for being thank with us, you. Dr. Hamilton.